Hello everyone, I hope you are fine and safe. Uh, today I'm going to talk about the bearing fault uh, stages and analysis. This is one of the uh, videos in the uh, series of fault uh, uh, analysis. Uh, the thing is, there's many ways to detect the bearing fault and uh, there is many, I, I saw there is many videos, there is many courses about the bearing fault analysis and I was thinking to make something a little bit different and in this video, I'm not, talk, I'm not gonna talk about the uh, each individual uh, fault by itself. Like I'm not talking about the what happened with the inner race, the cave, the rolling element, and the uh, and the outer race. I'm gonna talk about the fault stages in, in, in general, and uh, and at the end I will show you uh, like spectrum big view for the uh, for one of the bearing faults I, I found before. My name is Salah Atiyah, I'm a conditional motoring and uh, reliability specialist. I have a bachelor degree in mechanical engineering and I'm CAT 4 by division analyst. Uh, bearing is the most important part in your machine and if it fails, the, uh, that might cost you like downtime, secondary damage, um, the production will stop and, and many more. In this course, I'm not going to talk about the uh, what's the causes of the bearing failure and uh, what's the bearing failure modes. I will do this in a separate uh, videos about the bearing, uh, even for the high frequency detection techniques like the uh, spike energy, uh, envelope acceleration, the modulation, the big view. I'm going to talk about this in a separate video. And uh, and by the way, I'm going to make uh, a video series about uh, reviewing for all the vibration data collectors on, on the markets and the laser aligning gears, the thermal imaging cameras, and most of the condition monitoring uh, devices and instruments we, we, we're using. Uh, this video will, will, it's more like when, when you watch a review video for a mobile phone or for, uh, for a car or something, I didn't see videos reviewing the, uh, the condition monitoring devices. And I saw many people, they go to buy a condition monitoring, sorry, a vibration data collector. He spent lots of money and he, he found this is not what he need. The software is not very friendly. The, uh, the, uh, the, uh, he not uh, able to cover all his applications. So in this video, I'm going to talk about the difference between them and the different techniques. Uh, come back to the bearing fault analysis. I mentioned this because the uh, one of the good uh, features in the SBM device, which is the uh, spike energy, and uh, this is one of the good ways to detect early uh, bearing failure. Uh, Come back to the bearing fault analysis. For any bearing, we have main four fault frequencies, which is the outer rays, the inner rays, the cage, and the rolling elements. To be able to calculate the uh, these fault frequencies, there is equations, and with uh, by the number of of, of, uh, of rolls or uh, bay, uh, of, um, elements inside the bearing, and the uh, by the uh, the uh, the inlet diameter, the out uh, outlet diameter, you can put this in equation and you can calculate this manually. But this is not anymore. You just put the bearing number, you put the, uh, the running speed, and this will give you the full fault frequencies. And uh, even if you don't have like uh, bearing, you know, like library in, in, uh, in, in your uh, software, or uh, you don't have full bearing numbers, there is uh, the website I, I put here. This is the link for it. And I will add this link on the video description. You can uh, have a look on this link is for SKF bearings. You can just put the bearing number, you can put the running speed, and it will give you all the fault frequency. Just be careful that you should double the value of the ball spin frequency at the ball is hit at the upper race and the inner race. So the value will get from the ball spin frequency. You multiply this by two or you double this value. This will be your starting fault and uh, frequency for the ball spin frequency. The uh, Bearing stage failure, the stage one, the noise level will be normal. The temperature level will be normal. You will have slight increase in the ultrasonic acoustic emission spike energy from five kilohertz to 40 kilohertz. And this is what I, I, I meant with the uh, spike energy detection of the SBM device. The overall vibration level will be still low. You will not see anything in the velocity spectrum, even in the low range or on the high range. As you can see here, this is your low range, nothing. The high range, high low, uh, range is nothing. And then you will start to see some uh, more slightly high noise energy between 5 kilohertz and 40 kilohertz. Uh, the stage two, you will have slight increase in the noise level, and you kind of start to have some stress waves between the 1 kilohertz and the 5 kilohertz. 
the temperature level will be still normal. There will be large increase in the ultrasonic sound, acoustic condition, and the spike energy between 5 kHz to 40. There will be a slight increase in the acceleration overall vibration level. Uh, from stage three, and this is the one which is, uh, I took my decision or started to write, to write some notes on my vibration report or trying to take a decision at this stage, uh, this is stage three. You will see noise level much higher, the temperature level uh, will show slight increase, very high ultrasonic sound, acoustic emission, spike energy, large increase in the acceleration, and then you will start to see the fault frequency on the high range of the velocity uh, spectrum. And you can see the, uh, like for example, this outer rays and the second harmonic, but with no side bands. At this stage, you will start to see it on the low range of the velocity spectrum with high temperature, with high noise. You start to see side bands for the fault frequency, like for the outer rays, you can see side bands at the cage frequency or the FTF, and or you can see the inner rays with side band at the running speed of the shaft, and uh, the bearing can fail at any stage. Uh, the last stage, which is bearing number, uh, which is stage number five, we'll see high noise level, high temperature, uh, large increase in acceleration, and the fault frequency will not see them. You'll start to see high noise floor, or like low band spikes, and then you will see the running the speed with harmonics as the indication of closeness and real damage happened to the bearing. You can hear the bearing um, uh, rattling or noising uh, while, while the machine is running. And the one of the other things, like for example, if you see the outer race fault frequency, like for example, 50, 76 hertz, or the inner race 121 hertz, at uh, severe damage to the bearing, this frequency is going to change. Like you might see the inner race frequency 124 instead of, 100, instead of 121, or 78, 79 instead of 76. And this because of the geometrical shape of the bearing, uh, it starts to change because of the effect of the, uh, of the damage having to the bearing. And this will affect the uh, default frequency. So when you put the frequency, uh, uh, when you put the fault frequency in your software with harmonics, it will not match the exact numbers you have for the uh, for the bearing fault frequency. With the harmonics, you're gonna see on the spectrum there will be slight shifting because of the uh, of the uh, geometrical change because of the uh, of the fault. This is here some some photos for the uh, bearing faults like uh, faults burning, uh, corrosion, fatigue, or something. And this uh, the vibration spectrum when you open your like uh, motor drive in, motor non drive in. Normally, I have a look first on the big view spectrum if you're using like the MHM software and the, uh, the MHM device. You can see, for example, here this is the, uh, the outer race the frequency, which is 74.8, and this is the harmonics for it. It's very clear on the spectrum that you see the outer race the frequency with harmonics with acceleration 0.2, it's not very high. Um, also, I'm going to talk, as I said, I'm going to talk in a separate video about all the high frequency detection techniques and the alarm levels for the uh, like the big view, mid demodulation, uh, spike energy, envelope acceleration, the difference between them. I'm going to talk about this. But volume two, it's not very high, but the, the fault is very clear. And you can see the fault frequency with, with harmonics. If you look in the velocity spectrum, you can see this in green, this is the running the speed with harmonics. And you can see non-harmonic components, which is the indication of the fault frequency. Like when you open your velocity spectrum, you can see the running speed with harmonics, okay, be fine. And then I start to see non-harmonic components with harmonics. Then you start to suspect there is bearing failure. Then you have these lines when you enter the bearing number and it's been calculated to the software. So you have one of the options to view all the fault frequencies with harmonics. So I start to view it. I see it's matching this fault frequency, which is 74 the non harmonics. And with many harmonics, you can see this is two, two harmonic components in green and one non harmonic in the middle. So it have all this harmonics with it. And so the fault start to appear as well in the velocity spectrum. It's almost like stage three. You start to see like here is small side band in the high range, but you start to see the spectrum. You can see if the velocity spectrum amplitude is going three millimeter per second, you can take a decision of replace the bearing. I can take decision on the bearing replace at this level. And I, I did this, I found many faults like this one, all this one was about 
even one millimeter per second or even less. Uh, and when you open the bearing, you see all these faults. You should not wait to see the levels like two or three millimeter per second. This means that you have a real damage to the bearing and the secondary damage might, might happen at any time. One also is a very good tool is the waterfall velocity spectrum. You can see here when it's highlighted in green, the spectrum looks fine, clean. And since this reading, which is in red, you start to see all this peaks and the spectrum became busy and this indication of the deterioration of the bearing fault. Yeah, that's that's all for today. Uh, I need to make all my videos very short, not get you bored from it. I hope you liked the video. Uh, please like, subscribe, and, um, and, uh, and share. And thanks for watching.